see it lift off. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna push it out just a little bit so it's further away from us. Eric Chang is flying a phantom drone made by DJI in San Francisco, where Chang is the director of aerial imaging. This particular model will fly about uh, just over half a mile away. This Phantom flies with GPS technology and a GoPro digital camera, all linked real time to an iPhone. What's changed is flight controllers have gotten really advanced and they do a lot of the flying for you. And you can put one in the air for say 20 minutes now versus maybe five minutes of you know, the helicopters in the past. Drones or unmanned aerial systems appeal to any industry with a need for aerial images or mapping. Filmmaking, farming, real estate, and in many ways, sports. The way I got started actually was by getting footage of surfers. Some of the surf footage, I think, is, is something we've never seen before. From surfers, Cheng moved on to an even faster sport. We went to a racetrack and we filmed uh, race cars going around the track. Um, and, you know, meanwhile, they were already analyzing everything, all the data they could possibly get from the car. That's right, data. For sports, drones provide more than just stunning footage that looks good in a highlight reel or promo video. Athletes and coaches are starting to use those aerial shots for analytics. Almost every sport can be covered from an aerial perspective. In fact, most of them are already. It's just that they're done from helicopters and blimps. And so it's a very natural extension to use something that is small, less expensive, less dangerous to operate. Getting an aerial perspective has always been coveted in sports. Many college football programs, such as UCLA, use hydraulic lifts to elevate camera crews to film drills and scrimmages. But now the Bruins are going one step further. I didn't even know that those things were called drones until you know, we started to research it. UCLA football coach Jim Mora started using drones a year ago. In everything that we do, we want to be cutting edge. We want to be on the forefront of technology. You know, we want to be trying to do things that other people aren't doing yet. All football programs use video to analyze the players, but UCLA is among the first to use drone shots. I thought it would really be neat to see something from overhead looking down on a drill or down on a position. You can get a real clear perspective of spacing between your offensive linemen or differences in depth of the rush lanes of your defensive linemen. You know, it's not a gimmick for us. It's fun, it's cool, but at the end of the day, you know, it, there's an there's a added value to having that contraption hovering around our field. UCLA drone duty goes to video director Ken Norris. If they go this way, we'll stand behind the line of scrimmage and we'll, uh, we'll get some pretty good shots. Norris has a handle on things now, but admits there is a learning curve. You hear about people losing control of their drone. I would say 10 out of 10, 10 times it's because it's not calibrated. Although rare, drone accidents do happen. In Brazil, one crashed into a soccer crowd. In Australia, a triathlete was injured after one struck her in the head. We use just a standard RC transmitter. Ryan Baker, founder and CEO of Arch Aerial in Houston, is trying to assure potential clients his drones are safe. What's the maximum height on that, on that model? So in the U.S., uh, there's a regulation that states you have to stay below 400 feet. Um, so this can certainly reach that. Uh, During spring practice at Westlake High School in Austin, Texas, head football coach Darren Allman is taking a test flight. Let's maybe push forward just a little bit. Feels good. You know people are going to go uh, nuts over this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Change the world. Uh, once coaches get a hold of stuff like this, it uh, word spreads and it goes pretty quickly and, and, and no one wants to, uh, you know, have a disadvantage either. So in this highly competitive athletic environment, why doesn't everyone have a drone? Well, there's a problem. In many cases, they aren't exactly legal. 
If I am the coach of a football team and I arrange for a drone to fly over my players, is that in violation of the law? It's uh, unfortunately a very complicated question. Kenneth Quinn is among a growing crop of drone lawyers. Well, I mean, the principal warrants of commercial applications of drones or unmanned aircraft systems are going to be safety, security, and privacy. The Federal Aviation Administration, where Quinn once served as chief counsel, has been cracking down on what it deems as illegal use. It grounded this drone that was shooting promotional video for the Washington Nationals in March. But in another case, a federal judge threw out a $10,000 fine the FAA had levied against a commercial drone operator shooting video of the University of Virginia campus, saying that the agency had no authority over small unmanned aircraft. It's caused a number of people to uh, feel that the FAA needs to get its act together much sooner so that we don't have these gaps in regulation with uncertain terrain and very spotty enforcement. The FAA is working on new guidelines and laws regulating drones, but those likely won't be ready until late next year. In terms of the drone community, what would you be comfortable with as far as rules, guidelines, limitations from the FAA? Um, I think having specific no-fly zones near airports, obviously that's a no-brainer. Um, and in high traffic areas where, uh, you know, like over highways or um, in downtown areas. Anybody that uses these things have to understand, you know, uh, it's all about safety first. You know, you just can't just take these toys up and just, uh, you know, put them up in the air because you, you never know what's going to happen.